computer. So I just want to welcome Ryan Kruger or Krier or whatever you want to. Kruger is probably much cooler than Krier, the Afrikaans version. Yeah. Kruger sounds so much cooler. Ryan <laughs> Kruger is like a proper film name. Um, you're a famous director and actor. So we're going to have an interview today with you. Um, thank you for having me and taking the time out of your day. So we're just going to talk about lockdown. Now, we just started the conversation actually prior to me recording it. And I want to hear that story. So, yeah, South African lockdown's crazy because we've stopped or banned the sale of cigarettes and alcohol like really i'm not sure why um but tell me what your well, experience I, like you were explaining about cigarettes and rolling up cigarettes and yeah well i uh i smoke i've quit like many many times um the alcohol thing doesn't bother me i've never been big on alcohol so they can ban that forever like i don't give a shit uh, it's nice to have a nice whiskey every now and then but uh, apart from that i'm really fine with it but now the cigarette ban is bad because when you smoke and you need to smoke, that's probably all the domestic violence that is happening. Now <laughs> yes, from the all the people, domestic violence because it can't get their smoke. smoke. Yeah. So, so the thing is, it's um, so obviously you, you know you can buy these black market cigarettes here and there, which is the charging ridiculous. And now they've got like no brand names left. So now it's these like the poor of the poorest poor man cigarettes that's which is probably about 10 rand that you could probably buy it for normally and you've never heard of the makes but now it's they're charging like 110 rand for one of those yeah so I've heard the same. not that you know anything about that but i've heard the same thing yeah no it's crazy so i hopefully most people will go into those little shops and go i'm not paying I'm not paying that much for that. I'd rather smoke tea bags, but you said you would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, I saw uh, some of the people online who were smoking tea bags, and I'm like, tea bags? I was like, fucking hell, this is getting, it's getting bad now. So <laughs> Desperate. Tea, tea bags. Never, never thought I'd ever see myself sitting there going, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to have another tea bag. <laughs> and, uh, so the thing is, it's like, but it's the, it's the expensive herbal tea. So it's like those old school it's herbal. It's not rooibos. So, so, yeah. <laughs> It's not Earl, uh, what, what was it called? What's the other? The Earl Grey. Hey, Earl Grey could be good because of bergamot, the oil. Okay. And the thing is, it's just like, yeah, it, it, those herbal uh, tea bags are better <laughs> than those really bad, bad, cig you know, those uh, shitty cigarettes because it's... No it's chemicals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had one and I was like, oh, my chest. Just, I felt like I've been sleeping next to it like a bonfire for the whole night. So, yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't smoke. Can't do it. So, I might as well just quit then rather than smoke that. Yeah, exactly. So, so I was going to ask you, so the, the reason I'm making these interviews is that uh, I, I realized there's a lot of stuff out there from, I, I remembered that I saw a video of my kid. Actually, I can't access the account anymore, so I can't even delete the videos, right? But there's videos of my little girl when she was tiny, still on YouTube. And I thought, wow, man, this is like 10 years ago. And so I'm hoping that our stuff will be accessible in 10 years. And if someone had to look back, because this is our little historical moment, right? This is yeah. what the people went through in World War One and Two. We're not, I mean, not the extent, but it's a global event. It's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, it's so I want to know so if someone was looking back. Yeah, if someone was looking back at this time, I want to capture a bit of you in this moment. So, how has lockdown affected you? Um, well, the, the whole thing is, um, we would just me and uh, my producer James, we were just in LA, so it was like a week. It was a week before lockdown. So we, we were, uh, we had to get out of, uh, the States like as soon as possible. So we, we cut our trip, uh, short by a few days to, to, to get one of the, like the last flights back. And, and still at that time, you still think, oh, this is crazy, mm. but you still don't know at that time, what, what is actually going to happen like next, like, like where I, where we are now to where I was then, I wouldn't have thought you know that this would have happened no. so i mean so yeah i, I mean because when you say lockdown a few you know a few weeks ago a, a month or two ago then you know what what does that mean yes. you know what i mean yeah. so now it's lockdown and then you, got all the, you know so you can't you know you can't 
you know, you, you have to, you know, you can't be out further than eight o'clock. You've got to be at home and you've got to stay in the whole time. So for me, we were just, we just had our world premiere at CineQuest in uh, San Jose and we went to LA and then we had to come back. So the ball was just rolling for my first uh, feature film. And then now it's kind of like slowed down a bit. And then funny enough, recently now it's starting back up again in a, in a way. But at the same time, it was just that whole thing where because of this whole thing now, I mean, there's a lot of film festivals that is, you know, that is going to be online instead of obviously having those big festivals. So in that sense, it's uh, it's a bit shitty and a bit crazy. Mm. But yeah, I mean, this, this whole thing as a, you know, as an actor or a director shooting stuff, I mean... Only over the past week, people have only just got permits now to do stuff. So the thing is, you know, this whole time, nobody's been able to film unless they're filming stuff in their house. So all the overseas productions, as you know, are not coming here and everything. So, I mean, it's just, it's been, you know, obviously this very unique sort of thing. So, you know, I always say to people, you know, just before lockdown, uh, I said to people, because every time you say to certain people over the years, like, oh, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? And they always go, I just haven't got time. Uh, I'm yeah, so, busy do. doing this. so when I knew lockdown was just about to happen, and I was already in a, a, a week in lockdown already before, before you guys, because I came back from the States. So I had to like quarantine myself. So the thing is, it's, you know, so I'd always say to people, you know, why didn't you do this? And they say, oh, I haven't got time. I'm too busy. I've got my job. And now with lockdown, uh, you know, at the start, I said, nobody's got no excuse anymore for saying I didn't have time to do this or I didn't have time to do that. We, we've had nothing but time. <laughs> so, you know, if you've got an office and you want to paint, you know, you want to paint a, a painting or, you know, you're a, you're a writer, you can write a script or, you know, if you want you, those projects that you've always wanted to edit or whatever, you know, you've had nothing but time to do all these amazing things that you've always wanted to do and never got around to do it. Because yeah. you don't want to come out of lockdown and go, I've seen every <laughs> single Netflix series that's out. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't want that. You know what I mean? Why not, Brian? So, Why not? Well, well, that's fine. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, I think it's important to have structure in a sense of yeah. like, Routine. you know, you don't want to come out of there and say, I've just sat on my ass and done nothing. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I love, I love, uh, I love cooking. I've always loved cooking. But now I'm over it because I'm cooking three times a day, two or three times a day, and I'm just like over it. And I'm just, like, uh, just got. I, I, if anything, I've probably put on from not going out and just eating like loads of really, really good food. I'm like lasagna. I'm gonna make a big lasagna, or I do that. I've just been making like all this epic, uh, all this epic food. Uh, it's funny actually because I've took a picture of every single meal that I've had every single day. So oh, that's this, like, cool. I'd love yeah. to see it. That would be a cool diary. Yeah. So I've done that, which is, which is cool. And apart from that, so the thing is, like, with me, because I've been stuck in, so I can only write, like, write stuff. And I have got stuff to write. But as we know, like, all writers, you need to be in the mood to write stuff, you know? Hmm. And I've tried, like, two or three times, and, and I just haven't been in the mood. You know, you've got to be in the right frame of mind. Yeah. And so what I have done is I've, uh, so I have a front garden. So I've just planted like loads of veggies. That's what I did. So I've planted, uh, I've planted, uh, I've, planted uh, I've been growing lettuce, uh, ginger, garlic, onions, chilies, gem squash. Um, there's quite a few things. So I've been, Sounds I've, like a whole so meal. Yeah, so I've been like plant, uh, doing planting all that, and it's been growing really quick, and really fast. And then apart from that, this is how bored I was. I've got this little thing I'm going to show you now. So, um, so I've lived in my place where I live now for about five, six years. So I always order, um, not always order. It's every now and then, but it's it's a lot over the past five, six years. So I used to always order monks uh, Chinese. So every time you order amongst Chinese, you always get the chopsticks. So for the longest time, five or six years, I've had like a drawer full of chopsticks. And I've always been like, what am I going to do with those chopsticks? 
I'm just going to keep them. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to, I'm going to make something out of it. I'm going so to then, so, so then, so then I decided like, right, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to get some glue and I'm going to make something. So my first, <laughs> my first thought was, right, I'm going to make like this castle or I'm going to make this boat. And then, and then I got like halfway through and I was like, oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this anymore. I'm just like over <laughs> it. My, my, my glue was running out and, and I'm like, oh, my glue's running out. This other glue's not strong enough. I was like, wow. Oh. And I was like, I've got to finish it, but I, I can't make what I wanted to make because it's just going to take too long and I'm running out of glue and I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna, what else could this be what I've made so far? I'm like, all right, I'm just going to make a roof <laughs> and then I'm going to make a birdhouse. So I made this out of chopsticks. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. And it's got purpose. It's got purpose. Yeah. Isn't uh, that the coolest it's thing? It's always a little bit big. Yeah. Oh, see, now that's yeah. nice. You can put it by your vegetables. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I was my goodness. Make a little pole You're thing. amazing. So you're creative yeah. as well in an in a artistic way, not just your, your music videos and your movies. Yeah. Is it the top as well? Yeah, yeah. So like t times uh times were hard. Smoking tea bags, making uh little uh, bed houses out of chopsticks. <laughs> so, These are so times to I remember, did. guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's what I've been doing. So yeah, besides that, um, yeah, I mean it's. I want to ask you something. A, you're a, you're yeah. a famous director because you've done you're actor as well. I get that, and that's one of your, your, your hats. But from the directing point of view, you've won awards and you've also now got this fried Barry, right? That's going and doing the circuit and winning. Yeah. Which do you prefer, film or music video? Um, well, it's the same thing. I don't know. It's, for me, it's the same thing in a sense of, I was, always, I was always known for narrative storytelling within music videos. Like, you know, like the Prime Circle video yeah. know, I did with you. So, for me, it's, it's no no difference in the sense of, yeah, obviously films are different than music videos, but if what I was already doing with narrative already. So I'm just doing long form narrative. And as this is my first feature, obviously it's the first long form thing that I've ever done. So, which is way, way, way better just to really tell longer stories and longer character development and, you know, working with you know with, with you know just a longer form working with actors and stuff like this and it's it gets to a point where you're on set and you're like shit i've never actually worked on something for for so long you know yes. it was just like an ongoing uh thing but it was but it was amazing and it was great and it's just cool to have that um i mean it's you know you know what i mean it's it, it's so special doing your first feature and yes. it's that, that I think that feeling and a sense of accomplishment we because the product is totally different. The scale is oh, different. Yeah. yeah, and everybody was amazing. We just had the like and the amazing crew, amazing actors, everybody that took part. And the thing is we just had so much fun. We just had so much fun making making this film. And and for me it was such an accomplishment in a sense that you know, it's, I've always wanted to make, you know, to make, to, you know, to make a movie for as long as I can ever remember when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it gets to that point where it's just like, oh my God, we, just, we, we made a movie. We, yeah. we finished a movie. And, and, and what was crazy about this whole thing is that over the years, I've come close many, many times, like five, like maybe four or five, times to making a feature film and it, you know have you ever got a script or shot a, um, a pilot teaser trailer or something like that and you know people have spoke to or people have contacted me out the blue and said Ryan we want to work with you we want to make a movie and then I get all excited and then it kind of fades away and that's happened like so many times um, and I've kind of knew <clears throat> I've kind of knew the answer like all along where you just got to do it yourself do it yourself you think, you think to yourself, you know, uh, you know, maybe this is going to happen, and maybe, maybe we are going to make a film with these people. Uh, and three years ago, I went through like the worst time of my life. Uh, I had a, I had a health problem. I went into depression. 
and uh, yeah, it was like, uh, well, it's like more like two and a half years ago, uh, but I had this operation and he died of sepsis. I lost my girlfriend at, at the time. I went into depression and it was like the worst time of life. And I just got further and further and further down the rabbit hole. And it got to this point where I was done. Like I was just done. I'm like, I'm not happy anymore. I'm not this. And I was just, I was just done. I, I really hit rock bottom. And I said to myself, what is at the top of my list in life mm. to, to do? Uh, you know, what's at the top of the bucket list? And it was, it was to make a movie. Yeah. So at that time, hitting rock bottom and going through depression, uh, I, li I literally knew my new producer for only like two months, maybe, maybe, maybe even less. And I rang him up and I, well, I got this idea three days before. So I got this idea and for to shoot Fry Barry, which originally was a short from 2017, but I extended the idea and I, I had this idea and it took, uh, basically I wrote a scene breakdown in three days. That's it. Just three days, the scene breakdown for about 60% of the movie, 50, 60% of the movie. And then not, no script, just the scene breakdown. And it is as, as short as he goes into the supermarket. This happens. He goes there. He meets this person. It's, it's as brief as that. Yeah. So then I rang my producer and I said, so dude, I, I want to make a film and I want to make it next month. And my producer, James, was like, have you got a script? And I'm like, no. And he goes, why haven't you got a script? And I said, well, I have to do it a certain way. And so I have to, I have, I have to make it like this. Uh, I'm going to do a scene breakdown. And he's like, okay. And he goes, you got any money? And I'm like, well, I've got some money. And if you've got some money, we can put it together and we can make this film and we can shoot it in blocks. And he was like, okay, cool. And then I'm like, and he goes, but why, do you, why, do you got, why have you got to shoot it next month? And I was like, because if we don't shoot it next month, it's never going to happen. Yeah. It's going to get postponed and get pushed enough. back and this and this. And I shit you not, one month, one month later, we were shooting the movie. So yeah, one month later, awesome. we were shooting the movie. We shot the first week and then, you know, and then it was like a few weeks went by and then we shot another few days. So it was literally shoot, plan, plan, shoot, plan, plan, shoot. And, and, and that's it. And that's, that's what we, we did. And then that first day of filming, was 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 great because it was like oh my god we're making a movie and then it was like halfway through we're like oh my god we're halfway through the movie and then it was like the last day and we were shooting on top of uh you know the cutoff bridge in cape town oh yes, yes so that was our very last day of shooting and it was such a great location to finish shooting and stuff like that and it was and it was just again it was just like it was so like surreal that we're like oh my god we you, you know, it. we went out to shoot a movie. We didn't get any money from the, the government. We didn't get this. We didn't get, we did it all ourselves, you know, and we spent a lot of money making it, but we did it ourselves. And that's what's, what's great about it. And then, you know, then we started post, but even after that, it just like, you know, time goes by quick. So it was, so it was like, oh my God, first day of shooting, halfway through, end the movie. Uh, finished post and then it was like we're in America having the world premiere and we're like, like, it's just like how insane. did it happen huh awesome. so, so yeah so if it wasn't you know I think everything happens for a reason so for me go back to when I, when I said I was depressed and stuff if I didn't go through that depression and nearly die and go through all that shit I wouldn't have made the movie no. at all like no, without a doubt. Because it birthed out of that, or almost it's like yeah. I talk about the seed, right? It's in yeah. the darkness that the seed reaches for life and comes to this beautiful inspiration. So we yeah. sometimes need those catalysts. We need that yeah. moment of total breakdown. I, I did a book in one of my lowest moments. I wrote a whole children's book, um, which yeah. I'm super proud of and I still want to publish, but I want to do it myself. But it's almost like some of our creativity and I, I think it's the passion, right? That we've sometimes yeah. always procrastinate later, not now, I don't have the money. But sometimes when life forces us to see when we rock bottom where there's nothing, that's where our purest form of inspiration comes from. And if we don't follow up on that inspiration, if you hadn't have gone and said, screw it, we're doing it in a month, it, like yeah. you said, it might not have happened. And, yeah, exactly. 
And so we sometimes, like you say, those dark moments, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, it's with hindsight, right? But when you're in that moment, you think this is the worst time of my life, but we don't realize it's birthing something beautiful that is yeah. going to change your, your life forever. Yeah. And it, and it, and it has, and it will, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. And, and, but that's why I knew that at that moment in time of rock bottom, I was like, I need to do that number one thing that I've always wanted to do. And not just that. I mean, I could I, I could have made any other script or film that I ha that I already had, you know, script that I had, and I decided to go with Fry Barry, which I think is a great first time uh, movie for a first time feature film director. But it had to be, and that's why I said I wrote. You know, the whole movie is improv. The whole movie's improv. Okay. Like I said it. I had the idea, like you know, for three. Uh, you know. You know, I wrote a scene breakdown in three days for 60% of the movie. And then on set, we did all the improv, working with the actors and working very closely and having it structured still in a sense. But then I wrote like six pieces of dialogue for six actors and that was it. So the movie was developing as we were going. So the reason why I'm saying this is that I also, at that time, I needed something super creative. So I had these other scripts, it would have been creative, but this form of filmmaking to do it the way I did and to have a lead actor that's not a professionally trained actor either. So it was like an open plan scale to do anything I wanted. And so, yeah, and the film itself, it has, it's not just my first feature, it's, it's that whole thing because of the depression thing. It's so personal to me. It's got so many, it's got so much stuff in there that's personal to me. Even all these like hidden, hidden little things in the movie, there's loads. There's I loads. tell so some it's of the hidden it's stuff. Like what, like if you yeah. could put like little secret stuff of that we might not know, but now that if we watch the movie, we will. Well, what secret stuff? Yes. And there's loads. I don't know. Like I, I, it's, it, it, it's, it's weird. It's like personal stuff as well. So, I mean, it's weird, but it's one of those things. If you watch the film, there's there's either stuff in the background, stuff on the TV. There's lots. There's lots, and if, even just even stupid things like so. When I was a kid, my mom used to make me. Uh, she used to call. You know, we have like egg and toast, and you chop it up. So my mom would say, "Dippy egg and soldiers." Stupid, mm -hmm. but it, it's like one of those things when you're a kid, and that's what your mom used to always call it. So it's silly things just like that. But I put that into the movie, but it fits so well because of the, the characters and stuff like this. And it will make more sense when you watch the film, what I've, what I've just said now. But yeah, so it's, it's just a very, yeah, it's a very personal movie. It's got so much, so much of me in and I wouldn't have done it. So the sad thing is, and the great thing is that it took me to nearly die to realize what the fuck am I doing? I gotta make this movie. And as I said, if I didn't go through that stuff, I wouldn't have made it. I, 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 it saved my life in so many ways. I, I wouldn't have made the movie. And like I know for sure, I probably just would have either died or would have went on longer thinking, oh, maybe something's going to happen. Yes. Maybe one of these people will make a movie with me or whatever. You made um, it happen. That's yeah. the biggest difference, right? Yeah. Yes. You made it happen. You took that first step and you said, listen, this is what I'm doing. Had you not yeah. done that, but you know what it gives you also, it gives you that awesome power to realize you are the creator of your life. You took the driving seat and you said, instead of waiting for this or that project to take off, I'm going to yeah. do it. This is going to be yeah. me. And that's why it's such a personal thing. And all of your heart and soul goes into that project and why those things then filter onto the screen. And remember movies are totally effective. You feel it. It's not just something you visually experience. You get an essence, and I call it always your essence or be your flavor. Your flavor came out in that project. And I think that's why it's such a success, because you can feel it. It's not just an empty project. It's something with meaning. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, but even when we were, like, we were on set, like, like people, people that work with me, they know that um, you know, I'm a people person. And I'm also, like, we do what we do because we love it, you know? We do what we do because we love it. When you're, you know, when you're an actor and you're on these big TV shows and films and stuff, everybody's, like, like oh, very serious. And, mm. and if somebody fucks up something, everybody will throw whoever under the bus straight away. And it's, 
And I hate that. Mm. And people that work with me, they know that when they're on my sets, it's like, you might not have fun. Mm. You, you know, this is what we do. We do it because we love it. We do it because yes, we might not have fun and we, and, we, and we enjoy it. So for me on set, I always, I'm always, you know, make sure that everybody is having a good time and everybody's okay and everybody's been fed. And even with, you know, the move, the uh, Fry Barry, it was like, you know, I was, I was cooking, I was cooking uh, like, like, uh, curries and pastas and chili con carne like till four in the morning and then I'm getting up at like whatever time to so I was cooking for the crew every day that we were filming and stuff and you know I, I, you know, I always like you know I care for the people that I work with and it's important yeah. to have fun and we all know when we're on set it gets to a point where we're like oh shit we need to get this done now we're running out of time yeah. so it's just important to you know to be on set and to have fun because it's meant to be fun and that's what we do, and we're, yeah. you know, and it's. I've always got time for like a, a joke take, you know, where we do something or play a prank on somebody or have a laugh. And I mean, it's important. You've got to, because I remember even when I was in the film industry, that your story reminds me a lot of our story when we did. Broken was kind of our labor of love, and we shot it with no money, getting all our crew and actors to live in our tiny two-bedroom cottage. And when I'm talking tiny, it's the minutest space, one bathroom. Yeah five people in a house um, living together for months on end. Me again, like you cooking, then driving home, then doing makeup, then going back, then cleaning the house. And ultimately if there wasn't that aspect of fun, but there's almost like this family, like you get so connected to people. And if you didn't have fun shooting at like three o'clock in the morning in the middle of an English forest, yeah. it'll kill you. So you've yeah. got to you've got to keep you've got to keep a something that's going to inspire you to keep going and to keep smiling. Yeah, we, like we, we we had so many actors on set, um, you know, just say, I don't know what it is with this film, and this is like on you know this is why we're filming on set. Is that a lot of these actors were like, there's something about this film that's going to be amazing. There's, there's there's just there's there's just a feel about it on set. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm, I'm trying to get information out of them because yes. I find it really interesting. And they're like, I don't know, but there's something, there's something definitely really great about this movie. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it just, there's, you there's can a, there's a, there's a, it's there's an a really essence. Good, yeah. It's when you're doing something that I think is greater than yourself. And when it comes from the right place, when it comes from your heart, when you produce something yeah. that is authentic to you, it yeah. filters into every fiber of that creation. Yeah. So, so now at the moment now we have, um, you know, we've uh, we've sent our film to um, to uh, critics, you know, to review the movie and stuff like that uh, by some of these like really big um, companies and stuff. And the great thing about it right now is that the people that have watched it have said all this like amazing stuff about it, like giving it like a cult cult film status and everything, which is amazing. Uh, but that's not going to get released. That's why I'm telling you now because this will only be released like later. So, yeah. Uh, so, so that's really cool that there's, you know, um, you know, people are watching it and they're, they're saying a lot of the same things that other people are saying, which is, which is really great. And um, yeah. And then now, uh, we haven't announced it yet, but we just got, um, we just got into Fantasia as well. Oh yes, I know Fantasia. I think we also got entered into Fantasia or got invited. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's cool. There's some really and cool Fantasia, festivals out there. Yeah. And Fantasia is like one of the biggest in the world for like genre films and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's I'm going to ask you something. You obviously were born in England. I want to know a little bit about you beyond just being a director and actor. Who is Ryan? Who are you? <laughs> That's a hard question. It's not an easy question. No, it's not because people don't want to expose themselves, you see. Um, How did you grow up? Where did you grow up? What are your other no, things so, beyond film? Um, I haven't really got a life, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, I'm a, I just do film and that's it. Like, I think every girlfriend that I ever had, they're like, oh my God, can't you talk about something else? Because <laughs> it's just like... It's such a major, major... So where were you born? Let's start with that. Where were you born in England? Yeah, so I was born in, uh, in Wallasey, uh, which is like 10, 15 minutes from Liverpool. 
Okay. So what was it like growing up there in England? Because I mean, it's so different to South Africa living in England. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think our, I think our childhoods in England compared to South Africa is completely different. Mm -hmm. So, but you, you you grew up in England, right? I lived here until I was 22, then got married and then moved over to England and then stayed there for 12 years. So more in my 20s and 30s when I did my film career was in England. Okay. So, yeah, so in England, as you, uh, in England, so I, I mean, like w when I speak to people here, they were like, you know, they would go to the mall and they would do this and that. And they, they you know, you guys didn't like go around in the streets in South Africa and all that, you know, that didn't happen. So in England, we were literally, uh, yeah, we literally grew up on the streets. Sounds very gangster, this. <laughs> we, we, we literally grew up on the streets in the sense of that, you know, it, it, you know, it's a different layout than South Africa. It was, you know, safer. Mm. Uh, so it was just like, you know, you, you would, uh, you know, you just go on all these adventures. Like, you, you remember the movie, like, Stand By Me? Yes, yes. So, like stuff like like a big part of my childhood was you know the films like Goonies and Stand By Me and all this. So for me, they were like they were they were like big parts of my like childhood in a sense of that me and my friends would go on all these like adventures and stuff like that. And that didn't really happen in South Africa, you know. For like hey stuff man, we like we played in water tunnels. Me and my cousins have the strangest story. We would leave, and I'd probably be maybe six or seven years old. We'd go out the backyard with the oldest cousin who was probably about seven years older than me, maybe 10 years, and we'd go in these big water tunnels. I mean, don't ask me how or where, and it sounds pretty creepy, but we loved it because there would be waterways and tunnels and we'd build things and structures to go down, but then it ended. It kind of like we didn't really, once you get into a bit more uh, yeah. later stages in South Africa, yes, it became a bit more unsafe. So I think what I've heard from English people is it's it's a lot more, you've got woods and people go out in these woods and do all these things and it's all cool and you've got deer and you've got bluebells and you've got, I think it's, I think the, the English space is awesome. If you think about film and music and even art, it's in these kind of places where you're forced to go out and explore even if it's yeah. super cold and, and, and gray. Yeah. Well, this is what we, we, we would literally, you know, my, you know, there'd be like five, you know, there'd be like four or five of us, my close friends. And, you know, he would say he's staying at my house. I would say he's staying at his house and all that. And then we'd go for like a day or two and we'd go to like, we would camp out and we'd just go yeah. on this like adventure and stuff like that. And, and that's why I'm saying it's, yeah, it's just a, it's hard to put my finger on it. I, I think it was just like we had way more freedom, like yes. way more freedom yeah. to to do things, and and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as maybe it wasn't as dangerous and stuff like that. But it yeah. was literally, it was like you know, just going on adventures like all the time and doing, you know, it, it was like I'll be honest, like my childhood, we would never go. Oh, we're going to the mall. We, we would never go, oh, we're going to the mall or we're going to go, do, like, that never, ever happened. It's like, we were, we were on our BMXs. It's like fucking, this is why I always say, like, you know, it's like when you look at, like, Stranger Things or, or um, uh, what's the other movie called? Um, fuck, I can't remember. But, yeah, it, it was just like we were always on our BMXs and we were going out and we were just, like, either going to, like, Wales or, like, all these random places and, these forests or whatever it yeah. was like we were always on this like mission know, adventure to, to do stuff and and i think you guys didn't didn't have that as much freedom no. to do those and even places. less now i mean i've got kids there's no way i'd let my kid walk to her friend's house which is literally three blocks away from here it's probably a yeah. 10 minute walk and yeah. i don't know why but i somehow feel like what happened I don't want to be that person with that says, I sent her and something happened. Probably nothing will happen, but yeah. somehow we live in such a society of fear in South Africa. So I'm sure. When did you come to South Africa? Um, so I've lived here now for 11 years. It's been 11 years. But Do you I've, like obviously it? I've always been back and forth. Do you like South Africa? I've been here for 11 years. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I like South Africa way more than England. By oh, far. Really? By far. I I think um you know, I think in England 
South Africa gets a lot of bad press mm. about stuff. You know, oh, it's dangerous and this. And yeah, it, it is parts are dangerous, but you know where's safe and where's not safe. Yes. And the difference is in England, we also get that we also get areas that you wouldn't fucking walk down the street at four in the morning or whatever time. <laughs> so so it, it's I know England may be a bit safer here and there. And but I mean there's a lot of shit that goes on in England that South Africa doesn't hear about. A lot. Yeah. So, and I just, I just like, I, I love the weather here. I love the people here. I love the food here. And it's, it's for me, career wise, it's, I couldn't have done what I've done here in England. No way. And so, so how does it feel to win these awards for your music videos? And I mean, you've done some pretty impressive and very cool bands and stuff. So you can talk about your, um, your business side of directing and music videos and what it feels like to stand out as the top director right for for music videos how does it feel um you know what it gets uh, like it gets to a point not even that it gets to a point when when you're when you're a kid and you go oh, i want to do acting or i want to do directing and it's this passion that you've always had and then you go to film school or whatever and then you start doing stuff so the thing is like when i was a kid i was like shooting it's like that movie, like Super 8. All those kids that go out and they shoot over the summer. That, that was literally like my childhood. We would go out and we'd shoot all these shitty films that we used to make. And, and then we'd, I would edit it and everything. I, you know, I'd make all, all these films. I must have made about 300 shit films <laughs> like when I was a kid. But the thing was, it was knowledge and, and you know, how we did it. It was just like, I didn't know the name of this or this, but I knew how to do it. So when I went to film school, I already, um, you know, I already did other music videos and, and other stuff and acting and all that before, you know, film school. So I actually went to film school because to get a crew and to get a crew together and people to work with. Um, so when stuff starts to happen, which was before film school for like acting wise, and you're on set and you're acting, it's like, you you know, you asked me how does it feel to win these awards, but I'm, I'm just going back to like the feeling of doing something that when you've sat there, when you're a kid, always wanting to do something. And then that moment that you actually do, you know, that moment that you're actually doing what you love doing and getting paid for it, you actually miss it. And you, you miss that moment in a sense of, that you're so busy doing what you're doing because you know what you have to do for your job. Yeah. You know, there's that moment that you miss and you go, Oh shit, I just did this. Or I like, I'm standing opposite Samuel L. Jackson or Robert Collin. You're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, you. I'm doing what I'm, I've always wanted to do. So it's like, so a lot of the time you miss that moment. And then, you know, when it came to directing, I'll be honest, like, I do many times and still I look around and I'm like, oh, I love what I do. And I'm very grateful for, you know, to be on set doing, doing yeah. what I do. But a lot of the time when you're, when you're doing stuff, you, you actually just, you actually miss that moment in time where it happens and you do not I'm not saying you don't appreciate it. You actually miss that moment. We're going, wow. You know, to forget like where you are and where you're standing and doing what you're doing because yeah. of it, comes normal to you so it's like when people go oh you know when you start working with famous people and stuff like that it doesn't matter that they're famous or anything it's just like if there's no different working with them apart from it's great that they're high profile people but you, you miss that moment because you just it's a it, it's yes it's fun and it's a job but it's just normal for you because you do what you're doing so you miss exactly. those those actually special little moments here and there and you're just like shit because you're just doing what you, you're doing and you appreciate it. So when getting awards is, you know, it's obviously, you know, it's great, you know, getting that pat on your back going, well done, you know. You, Ignition, you did yeah. a good video and, and obviously there's different film festivals, different awards that mean better, more, you know, different things. But at the same time, you know, I've struggled a lot in my career to – do my style and do what I want to do. Mm. So there's lots of videos that I'm very proud of and there's other stuff I'm like, eh. but the thing is, it's like <laughs> doing my like dark, 
my dark gritty stuff that I love doing and then also a bit more commercial yeah. stuff like the film and you know I, I, I love all those but my my darker side um has always been harder because South Africa is very very conservative yeah. so it's always been a thing where it's it, it's it I've struggled where you know the record label or whoever I said, like, yeah, it's too hectic. You've got to take it out. We cut that. We make it larger making... and happier, please. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh. So when you're making a music video, they let me do what I want to do, which not a lot of directors get. So I can do my own concept and everything. But I'm still in a box because I'm like, I've got to do what they're going to be happy with. And I've got to do something that I know we can get on TV and know what their fans like, you know? So I'm still in a box. So, and that's why, you know, I started shooting these experimental films, which mm -hmm. isn't out yet. It's been like a three-year project that I've been working on and I'm doing Fry Barry. But it's some of the best work that I've done in the sense of it's, it's, it's very me, you know, yeah, and a lot of that work. Freedom. Yeah, and a lot of that work, it's not even out yet. And it's some of my best stuff that I've ever done. And it's not even out yet. So we're going to so, look forward to it. So when will the world premiere? So the world premiere was, has just been in LA, right? That's where you've just gone yeah. for Fried Barry. Yeah, so we've, we've had the world premiere in the Cinequest in San Jose. And then we also had our South African premiere, but it was in Johannesburg at Rapid Lion, where we won uh, Best South African Film, Best Editor, and what was the other one? Uh, best the cinematographer so we, we yeah so we got three That's we got huge. three awards for that. yeah so if you yeah. still had one dream okay so you've lived your dream of making a movie is there anything else that you still have on your bucket list in terms of what do you want to achieve either personally or in your career it's loads <laughs> uh, it, but it's all it's all, obviously it's all it's all it's all film related so that's fine so just a final question so we can just get an essence. If someone looks back on this, what about lockdown or this part of your life or this moment in time stands out for you or any kind of like wisdom or something that you've learned from this experience that you would pass on? If someone had to look back at this moment, how could you capture what's going on for you right now? It's, 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 for me, it's one of those things where it's, it's like, Yes, we are, we're, we're, we're tired and we, we want to go out, but it's not about you. This is the thing. It's bigger than everybody. So it's not about you. So by saying that, it's, you know, it's such a bigger, a bigger thing. And, you know, what we've, I think also what we've learned from still ongoing experience, what we're going through right now, is that, you know, I think we, when this is over, I think we're going to appreciate things a lot more. A I lot totally more. agree. Like cigarettes. Uh, Not that I smoke, but for yeah, you, yeah. smoke instead of smoking tea bags. That's, that's, that's whatever. But <laughs> like, just, just everything. Just like just being out. Just having that freedom. And just like, I, I can't even tell you the last time I like danced in a club, or, you know, or a bar. Right now, I'm like, I'd fucking love to dance in a bar. I'd be like, this just fucking going crazy. <laughs> You're yeah. going extra crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> So, just freedom and, yeah and, and it, it's just having that freedom to do what you want to do and uh, and i mean it's crazy when you think about it that after eight o'clock you know at eight o'clock i was like oh my god we're gonna blow yeah, up if we go, if, if you're we gonna get go fined <laughs> it's nuts it's it's absolutely do you go crazy. shopping with your mask on do you wear your mask yeah. I mean, we're wearing the masks. We're, uh, wearing the <laughs> I'd gloves. love to see you with your mask on, by the way. <laughs> Do but, you look dangerous? Is the, yeah, is the well, question. I look like the invisible man. I wear my shades and I wear my and I wear my uh, and I wear my mask, my gloves. <laughs> So do you think this, I mean, just a, this is going to be maybe a challenging question, but do you think this is a natural disaster or do you think this is man-made? What's your opinion on that? Uh, I think it's man-made. I mean... Oh, cool. Okay. Interesting. Like a lot of people talk about like 5G or this is like yeah. some kind of weapon or some kind of control or the one percenters or like, where's your mind in all of this? <coughs> I think the thing is that 
we're never going to know. It's going to be one of those conspiracy theories where we're just not going to, we're never going to find out. It's just going to go on. People are going to blame people. You see, loads of people get annoyed with all these conspiracies and this and that. And the thing is, it's going to be one of those things in time that we're not going to be able to get to the bottom of it or, or that it's just going to be too many conspiracies. So people are hating all these conspiracies. But the thing is, what you got to remember is sometimes, you know, if you do your research, there's a little bit of truth in everything. Mm. Not everything, but there's bits of truth. And so instead of just listening to one thing, it's just like, well, that makes sense. That's quite interesting. Mm. So, and it's stuff like, like I saw a video the other day and it actually made, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. So. Was it Zach Bush? My, the, the guy that I love, not him. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, they were saying like, people are wearing masks and gloves going out to be extra safe. So the thing is, there's all this like bacteria and you know, normal bacteria and stuff that you touch. And you, that's how we build our immune system. That's yeah. how we, that's how we, we get, you know, we, we become more immune because our, uh, our system gets better from, you know, touching things and walking around and that, that's how we build our immune system. So, you know, there was like 10 different normal, uh, just doctors, surgeons or whatever said, you actually shouldn't be wearing gloves and a mask because you're lowering your um, immune system. The longer that you do that, you're lowering your immune system because you're, you're not touching all these things that you wouldn't You're not exposing touch. yourself. So you, you're not getting that exposure so you can build up your immunity. In fact, yes, I, but I yeah, agree. Absolutely. Yeah, so when I heard that, I was like, that's obviously the truth. That, that you know, exactly. I know that information already. So, so the thing is, I think, I think a lot of people I've probably had uh, uh, I've had Corona already and not even realized it because uh, everybody deals, everybody's body's different. So a lot of people could have had it already and then lost it and then we become immune to it. So, so I think that's a, that's a, a big, you know, that's a big thing. And then that, then that also shows that old people, like you've said, you know, a lot of these old people have died because their immune systems are lower as well. So exactly. Yeah. Listen, I'll, so, give you, I'll send you, I'll say, if you like these videos, I'm going to send you one uh, that I watched recently. It was such a, a very clear, you know, when some people just have a, there's no waffle. They're just very precise about the explanation. Yeah. And maybe if you've got time, I'll, I'll, I'll send the link to you. Yeah. Um, but I think what was apparent to me, and I wonder what it's going to be like when they lift lockdown completely. But I remember the first day and um, I live in a, in a three story townhouse, but I look out over basically the whole of table view up to Durbanville Hills. And the first day I woke up and it was exhilarating because it was so quiet. I loved it. So I wonder what it's going to be the difference. How are we going to be adjusting again when suddenly there's a lot of noise, a lot of traffic. Can we go back to what we were like or should we change our way? Yeah. I think it's a new, like, you know, I've heard that, you know, it's going to be the new normal is to wear a mask. Constantly, I think it'll go. I think it's going to go on for a long, long time. I hope not, because it's bloody I hope annoying. Not, but I, th I think it is. I, I think it is. I hope not. But I, think I can't breathe in those things. I'm going to yeah. pass out in the shops. Yeah. But I think it. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be like the new norm. I mean, like yesterday, the president spoke and he said, um, "No kissing and no hugs and no handshakes. It's the new normal." And you're just like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> That's not normal yeah. at all." Yeah. So I mean. <laughs> It's weird. We're living in very, very crazy, weird times. And I don't think we'll ever truly get to the bottom of how it happened or what caused. How or why? The, uh, no. Um, but I mean, you're in a historical moment. So hopefully one day someone's going to look back at Ryan today and they're going to have an insight into your life. And I want to yeah. just say thank you so much. I really appreciate that you took this time to chat to me. And it was an awesome interview. I love getting to know you. And um, I wish you all the best with all your projects. May you flourish and may you achieve everything you want to achieve. And I might connect back with you at some other time in the future just to have a catch up if that's okay. Yeah, all good. Thank you so much, eh, Nadia. It was uh, fun. It was awesome. And I'll let you know when I've uploaded it. So I'm just going to stop the recording. Bye. And then I'll chat to you.